Hey guys, welcome back to the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Dr. Corey Probst. We're going to continue into our series about how we can best deal with adversity. So mm -hmm. uh, we went through Corey's story and the accident that she endured this summer and talked a little bit about the just concept of psychological flexibility because I think any time we're, we're hit with something that's just unknown, your life's turned upside down, it's probably best to sit back and say, okay, this I wasn't ready for this. This is going to require some flexibility. But one of the things also, Corey, looking back, and I, I think you were the one who even taught me this term, mm -hmm. is I look at things I have faced in my life. Mm -hmm. I have gotten better at looking at them in a positive way or at least a flexible, accepting way. <clears throat> and it's all been due to self-efficacy, okay. which is – you know, what can you control? What can't you control? And to be self efficacious, efficacious, efficacious. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, <laughs> you know, that means that you are going to make sure that you, you touch on the things you can affect in a positive way. How yeah. can I affect this? How can I have impact? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's been a real key. And just, just knowing that concept, I think has helped me moving forward because I always go back to just knowing that that's what I have to do in this moment of maybe maybe confusion or pain yeah i think having just a process of asking what about this situation may i influence it's one of my favorite questions what may i influence about this not necessarily change 100 percent or get out of but just influence to a even small degree and self-efficacy is exactly that the belief in our ability to manage our circumstances or influence the situation in some minute way. And that's, that's incredibly difficult for a lot of people a lot of the time. But I think some people that have never even thought of this could be totally lost. I, I remember times of, of you know, some, some great torment in my life, mm -hmm. just being paralyzed, just not knowing what to do, thinking, you know, this is the end of whatever, whether it's, you know, financial or relational or something else, it's just, or physical, you know, an injury. And there's just no getting out of this. And you get into that spin of just doom and catastrophe. And yeah, a story. It's a, it's a literal story. Here's another question that I ask myself, Joe, is what, what narrative am I believing right now? <laughs> and fortunately in in my situation, I, there, I don't recall a moment except like I talked about in a previous episode where I was literally freaking out because I was so itchy and I just, um, where I had to ask myself like, what story or narrative am I believing right now that I can't handle this, that this is just far too uncomfortable to even bear. Um, but in, in very difficult moments, we are, if we're spinning, like you said, it's, if we're not in really grave danger or threat, um, just asking the question like, what's the story that I'm weaving that I'm attaching to right now can help us kind of create a little bit of distance from it to say, oh, but that's not actually happening. None of, none of that narrative that my mind has just written up like this awesome thriller of a novel is not actually happening. Like, I'm here, I'm okay. I'm sitting in the ambulance. I'm getting drugs. My bike is next to me. Like self-efficacy is being able to say, okay, what's the, what is actually present right now? What is real right now? Yeah. You know, I go back to one of the, one of the first things that I remember as just a fear of loss as a, as a young child, my mom was going through a lot of medical issues and so one of those one of those times probably most vulnerable as a young boy, you know, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're just you know you're you're not even in the really pre puberty phase of life where you're thinking about those things, but you're you're growing and learning and you're kind of coming online as an independent mm -hmm. person. And then you know my mom was in the hospital having exploratory surgeries and doctors saying she may die, and we went through years of that, and and that was a real traumatizing, yeah. helpless time. And then, you know, flash forward to, you know, maybe, maybe 15 years later and I'm in a hospital and my first daughter, you know, mm -hmm. dies in my hands. Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting there with your wife 
and you've got a son at home and this is going to be your daughter, your mm -hmm. second child, and she's gone. You know, you, you, you went to the hospital to have a baby and now you're going to have a funeral. Wow. And yeah. you, I mean, I, I can't even begin to tell you what that year was like because you just can't, unless you've gone through something like that, to explain the darkness and mm -hmm. just like, I, I'll never be the same. Mm-hmm but you come out of it in some ways stronger. You come out of it. And, and, and had I known just these concept of, you know, self-efficacy and, and been able to say, okay, this, I, I know this is horrible and I know this is going to hurt and it's going to take a long time, but you know, here are the steps to go through. Here's, you know, mm -hmm. just, just, just having that help and that support and that knowledge. Whereas now when I have faced things mm -hmm. with much more life experience, you know, a few decades you, you tend to be able to lean on those things and say, this, this is just as horrible. This is awful. I have no idea how I can possibly come out of this. Again, yeah. it could be, could be financial, occupational, relational. But when you influence just that one next thing and mm -hmm. just have a, have a little hope mm -hmm. that this can get better, I just have to go through these steps one day at a time, that's yep. the only way any of us come back out and mm -hmm. it's the only way only chance we have to come out better yeah it is literally one foot it sounds cliche but it's one foot in front of the other uh, um i had a few people tell me after my accident like you just just keep pedaling <laughs> you know you're not on a bike right now but you you just keep pedaling um what is the next best step that you can take you also you know, you, do, you, you brought up a good point in terms of when you take that next step and you get through this moment and then you get through the next moment and then you get through a day, if you have the awareness to be able to come back to that and to say, okay, I made it another day. Okay, I'm noticing these small changes that are occurring, like for you emotionally after the loss of your daughter, like okay, I'm noticing that the sun is shining today. I mean, I don't know if you had that awareness as you moved through that whole healing process, but that's really, really important. When, as I was healing through my accident, it, it's funny, I wouldn't be thinking it consciously like, what am I going to improve on today? But when there was an improvement, <laughs> it was, I would look back over the day and I was like, oh, I just dried my hair. <laughs> and there was no pain in my shoulder. <laughs> so it's being able to, and part of self-efficacy is this, taking the initiative and being deliberate about asking ourselves, what has changed? What have I gone through? What have I gotten through? Um, and how am I growing from this? Because inevitably, there will be other things down the road some things that we kind of have a hand in, in hurting ourselves with, and other things that we can't expect that are going to be pretty devastating. But we have those other experiences and our means and methods of getting through them to draw from. And that's, that's how I would wrap up this particular episode on self-efficacy. It's that, it's that total expectation. And at 50 years old versus 25 years old, mm -hmm. You know, the older me understands that mm -hmm. life is going to have a lot of downs mm -hmm. as well as ups. And, yeah. and you, don't, you don't always ideal, idealistically think that in your earlier years, or maybe, mm -hmm. you just, maybe you're older, but you just haven't had those things happen. Mm -hmm. And so I always, I always go back to, okay, I mean, this is me now, and this is your you know, information on self-efficacy that has helped. It may feel just as horrible and devastating, but at some point I sit down and say, okay, this can either get worse or get better. So what am I going to do to make it better? It's, it's still, it still may be a low point in my life, but yeah. how can I start building back up and what are the steps I have to take? And I, I tend to do this a lot now just so that I don't get too low. Whenever, Very whatever good. expectations are just like, well, that didn't work out and that sucks and that's horrible and now what do I do? It's like, well, okay, that, that might have been a bad thing, but let's, let's build back out because, yeah. as you said, the, the sun will shine tomorrow <laughs> at some point. At some point. If part of self-advocacy is just that realization that we're, we're always changing. It is 
everything is always shifting at all times. And that to me is really comforting because whatever I'm thinking right now is like, is the bottom is changing. Absolutely. And guys, I, I, as I talked to Corey before we even started filming this, I mean, what a, what a topic, right? We all go through major adversity at some point in our life, probably multiple times. Mm -hmm. It helps to not only have some knowledge like this and some tools that I know uh, Corey's going to help us with as we continue the series, but just support, man. Just, just reaching out, knowing that as you're going through this, other people would love to help. Uh, always, always be willing to reach out. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we love doing podcasts like this. We always kind of drift back toward the psychology because, you know, we're, we're all in this together. So mm -hmm. thanks, Corey, for that. And, guys, we will catch you next time in the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, guys.